he's trusting these boys to deliver today. Semi-final one in the Champions Cup. And we are away, Kingston College. Getting us going, Parchment picks it up for Clarendon College. And he's taken down on the Hamilton on the scene. And a free kick coming up for Clarendon College. The said before, Parchment really a good player, difficult to dispossess. Clarendon College, they possess the football field of well. Spoke about that 2019 final earlier, and about how they had 58% of possession. Even though there are many opportunities that you could recall, the fact is that we're offside. Yes, they, they, they like to keep the ball, as I said, Coach Hyde is that uh, a support boy that goes to the field on Sunday morning. If he can't have the ball, he'll take it up and go. He wants that ball and his team has to play with that in mind, but they're going to have to make that possession count. It has to be breaking lines when they're in possession and moving quickly. They want it to be lethargic against Charlie Smith. Preached patience in the pre-match interview with Edward Hyde. Parchment. Showing off a bit of his skill, the Clarendon College number 11. Louis Watson steps in and one position. I think Parchment just did a little bit too much there. He was looking to try and con referee Hamilton into something. She wasn't buying it. But again, just demonstrating his good technical ability. Let's see. Lord of Bernard, the head coach of Kingston College. Won them their first Manning Cup title in 32 years back in 2018. Having won the Champions Cup a couple of times, has done with Kingston College what he didn't do, although he came really close with Wilma's boys. But he is a terrific coach, had some great times with Harborview as well at the National Premier League level. Real high quality coach, Lord Bernard at the end of the 2019 season, suggested that that might have been his last with KC. Maybe the COVID-19 pandemic has given him perspective and he's right back fighting for more trophies. He did say he was going to take a sabbatical where it was forced upon him and I think it, it served him well. But one good sign we've seen so far, Ricardo from the Strand and College team, a little bit more urgent in their play. Um, he's never had the bulk of the possession so far and has shown the greater intent. Kingston College not settling yet early days, but at least signs from Grandin is that they're looking to do much better. As we see, Coach Hyder didn't stand much in his last game. Uh, late on, he stood up for a little bit. He's standing from the start here. That means a lot to him this game. He knows he's going up against a top quality team with quality players. Kingston College on the attack. Pearson picks it up just outside the 18. Comes out to Stewart. His shot takes a deflection and is handed by Jamil Fassel. Keeps it from going behind for a corner kick. The 19-year-old Jack Stewart with a right-footed effort. Warning from the KC boys. Yeah, a lot of warning there, and as you can see in this attack from KC, it's about six players in the attacking third. So they commit players, but they recover quite well, which is why they're so mean defensively. But so often you see teams who attack well, or, or they defend well, and they give up one aspect of the game, but Kingston College has they've managed to find the right balance. Clarendon College in possession. Malachi Douglas. Caught behind by Devonta Walker. Corner kick coming up. The first one of the contest. And uh, I don't think, based on what I've heard, Coach Bernard said off camera, he so trusts his back four and goalkeeper. Has all reason to do so, and the statistics, they don't lie. Um, so you expect him to deal with this. Although Clarendon College, they have committed. A number of players, six to be exact, I think, in the box. Corner kick coming up for Clarendon College. Is it in free? 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 Is it in
and it was the worker who got a header onto it, Devontae Walker. They were getting another opportunity to find that college. They want to clear that first, pose that first hurdle. So it's giving us a second opportunity to really put in a, a better delivery or so towards that penalty or towards the six yard box they were right in the mix zone. Carmen College, corner kick coming up again. This is a better delivery to the back post, no too much weight on it and it goes behind for a Kingston College. Goal kick for Carmen College. Once again starting out with a lot of the possession, with more of the possession. Nick Jones there, he went from one extreme to the next, a shot, one to the front post there, and then the other one overcooked it, but it's early days, he'll get his measure of it. Paul Vaughn in midfield for Perica. Harlan College right back with it, though. are two of the best teams we've seen in school board football this season. So you expect a high level this afternoon from both. As I think I think also it's not just Carmen College wanting to play quicker. I think unlike Charlie Smith, which they faced in the first match of this competition, they will be hustled more, hurried more by this Kingston College team. Kingston College on the attack again. Having to do defensive work, but comes possession. A shot block. The Kingston College boys not afraid to shoot from distance so far. Looking for Barkley. Barkley in possession for KC. The left footed cross has a lot on it. Kingston kept it well. Not with Watson. Here is a curling effort. Top the left up right from Renardo Berga. Scored in midweek. That was from close range. Trent is up from distance on this occasion. That was not far away. And that was really made by Jaheim Johnson who really chased the last cause. That ball at the far side and played it back inside to him. Just looking to curl inside using the defender as a shield. Didn't really get it off, but what we're seeing here from Kingston College, they're looking to hustle and hurry Cranon College, not allowing them to play out from the back as they're normally accustomed to doing with a lot of ease. But this Kingston College team will not show them that amount of respect because they trust their ability on the ball. Kingston College looking to grow in confidence as well. Gives it away. Carnot College now going the other way. Parchment has it on the right. Rashad Parchment comes inside. Oh, delivers a lovely ball across the box. Here is a shot from distance. Both teams not afraid to shoot. Douglas goes left side. This is what they like. The flag stays down. The ball runs into touch. It's gone behind for a goal kick. So yeah, this is exactly what they like. Grand and College. They like to pass the ball around. And they would, would have enjoyed that bit of play. I certainly would, but that was a sweet looking ball from Parchment. Just lovely, lovely ball. As we see, they just picked out the run on the far side. Once he came back out, was always going to look for the strike. Did score a good goal in the last game, not from that distance, a little bit closer, but it's their intention not to shy on shooting, Karen. And uh, both teams really starting sprightly here. Yeah, Khalifa Richards, the Kingston College number three, taking a hit in a rather uncomfortable area. Poor young man, only 19 years of age. And might need some time to take care of that. Just be to be back in, in short order. 
but yes, it can be very, very painful. Ten minutes in, tight battle. Jones first up to play away from him. That's a lovely ball over on the left hand side. Up to the top of the area. There's the shot coming in from Rose. That's blocked. The former Thomas man. Charged down immediately. The expectation was there that he would look for the shot, Jamie Rose. Yeah, I think he just took a little too long on that one as we look at an infringement there. Ricardo Pickford, the number 18. Yeah, he's one that when the season started, said to look a bit heavy. Would have been, uh, for a lot of persons, they felt it would have been a source of weakness for Clarendon. Carmen College in possession again with Dixon. Parchment keeps it in. Oh, and just brilliantly chance to get across in. It's a good cross, but there are not enough men. And yellow and blue. And now it's headed behind the four a goal kick. But he has that ability to rush out Parchment, the ability to beat players, the ability to cross really well, but just didn't have the numbers inside the box on that occasion. Didn't have the number to have to be a pinpoint accuracy in terms of his cross. Didn't try getting well, but Lewis Watson certainly, certainly was, was, was happy with that. He was made a mockery, mockery of. But um, I tell you, this boy Parchment is such a lovely, lovely player. This coach at times says he doesn't know how good he really is. Tell you what, for us looking on, it's a joy to watch Ricardo. Sometimes that's not a bad thing with sportsmen when they don't know how good they are. It keeps them in check and they keep pushing for greater heights. Yeah, and it makes them a lot more coachable as well. You would know that most definitely. Wild to swing. I think Lewis Watson there, it could have been still suffering from the treatment he got from Parchment earlier. Just not settled yet. Still a little bit of an egg on his face. Didn't start the season, Watson has only come in since January. This is his second game in scoreboard football this season. I think easily he's going to be his toughest one up against Parchment. Of course, his father is the assistant coach, Raymond Watson, Freaky coming in from Jones. The header is wide and high as well. It's good to have family in the squad, but I don't think he would have made it on that. He would have done so on his on, on merit, one would think. Oh yeah, he's a quality player, no doubt about it. That's the point in that also. <laughs> Kylan College on the offensive again. Parchment, Akima Jones, his options being closed down all the time, and a good defensive work from Ricardo Beckford to prevent the ball from getting to Parchment. Yeah, I felt Jones should have gone to Parchment much earlier, turned away from him to go inside, there wasn't any option, but that ball down the flank, Parchment has been having a lot of joy. There's Raymond Watson, the assistant coach of Kingston College. Watching his son closely, I'm sure, as much as he's watching the entire team. Kingston College now. Barkley, the captain. Barkley finds Karen Stewart. First touch wasn't great. And lost a little bit of momentum with Casey keep going forward. And the Pearson plays it back into defense for Watson. There's the long guy, and all the flag stays down. But it's a lot closer to the keeper than it was to Jaheim Johnson. 
of a 16-year-old who was coming to the site today, having not started on Wednesday. Kingston College putting more numbers to their attack. And here's an opportunity, but it falls straight to goalkeeper Jamil Vassal. Coming off the boat of Renardo Berger. Watch him. He's going to be dangerous this afternoon. He's already shown that if you give him a sniff, he can make you pay. They seem to be very sharp. They're just ghosting on, uh, on the back of the defender, blind side of the defender. Johnson cuts it inside. Barkley couldn't get through the Clarendon College defense, and now Clarendon College away with it. This game has a good feel about it. Johnson can't get around Jones. Pearson runs out of real estate. Christopher Pearson, the 18 year old who was in the Champions Cup final of 2019, transferred from Monroe College a couple of seasons before that. The young man from Sheffield Primary School in Montego Bay is having his best season in schoolboy football and the Kingston College will need him to come to the party this afternoon although we haven't seen him much in the first 16 minutes there's a lot of time for him to have an influence on this game when you talk about forward planning and uh, Kingston College these two teams incidentally they are very, very good at that in terms of building for the future Parchment certainly a permanent fixture for Pearson it's okay, I understand the people in Christmas Park and Barkley. Another impressive one for KC Stewart trying to win it. Clarendon College away with it now. Let's see if they can attack the kick. Free kick coming up. The one thing Coach Hyde will be pleased with as he's seen a little bit. Is that the turn in the turnover rate of his team at times just a little bit not to his liking? Parchment's cross easily cut out. Okay, see with McCarthy. Spread forward by Walker. Stolen by Tamar Dunn. And who scored that beautiful equalizer against John Schmidt. And that was poor and technical ability and a patient, good composure he showed. So Paul fell from the sky, just ensured his knee was over, just we look at this infringement here, both teams we see here, not wanting to allow uh, either team to have much time on the ball, and always looking to, to get there early, preventing them from turning, uh, looking to, to collect, but we've seen the Ponte Volga already fair much into this game, he was the man who put in the challenge that led to the Clarendon College corner. Then he was the one who rose first to get ahead of when the initial corner was taken. There he is again on the scene, breaking up play. So watch him and the role that he's playing for this Kingston College team. Christopher Hall, the 17-year-old, standing over the free kick for Clarendon College. Already with five goals this season, Christopher Hall, one of a number of players that Karen and Connie transferred in 2017 from various schools. This is a cut to the free, and it comes off a Karen and College player goes behind for a goal kick. Yeah, it was a decent delivery. Uh, Kingston College, as we expect, to defend quite well. They don't concede just one goal over some nine games. And not be good. Box plays on his way with a bit of speed. Cops it inside for Berger. Berger trying to speed forward. And the ball is uh, taken off him with ease as well. The ball is done there, just doing some defensive work there. S sliding in and nipping that ball, breaking up the Kingston College attack that was looking quite dangerous. They do play those one touch, two touch football in the attacking third quite well, Kingston College. But one thing that we can see from the first 20 minutes of this contest is that the chances will not be many. You have uh, two good defensive teams. And uh, so far they are defending stoutly, making it very difficult for their defenses to be breached for either to get behind the defense. So we've seen a lot of shots from long range already. Clarendon College looking to get in a lot of crosses. We've 
see that the film rush high punch went over critical in that. Yeah, he has been the ability player. And, uh, can understand why with his quality. You're right, coach. Coach uh, High did say that he's going to have to defend well. They conceded 10 goals in the season, but it might just be skewed somewhat. Seven of those goals were conceded in the first around the group stage of uh, the Costa Cup, and uh, only three since the quarterfinal stage and the Champions Cup. I think they conceded two on the opening day of the Da Costa Cup when they played Edwin Allen. But they were in a really tough first round of Costa Cup group, Clarendon College. When you think that Glenmuir High School did not get out of that group, and Glenmuir actually beat Clarendon College. Then on in that group as well, former Ben Francis Cup winners, Edwin Allen, we spoke about Clarendon College on the attack with Parchment, comes it inside looking for Dixon, Dixon does well to maintain possession and Parchment has it again. Watson has his work cut out to keep him at bay. The ball inside, I'm not sure he was looking for Jackie Rose, but it did come off Rose. And now Kingston College will go the other way with their captain Barkley. Barkley over on the right hand side, two men arriving inside the box. The cross comes in and the clearance or the attempted clearance as well from Jackie Rose this time. The Clarendon College number six puts it behind for the first Kingston College corner of the contest. So, just so you're aware, two roses on the uh, Clarendon College team. No relation. Jaheen Rose, that's with an N. He's the number six, the defender. And Jaheen Rose with an M. He's the number ten. The man who has scored seven goals this season. And the captain, Barkley, gets ready to take the corner kick for KC. Barkley steps up left for it to the near post and it away comes out to Stewart. Did well to recover from a bad bounce but couldn't find a man in purple down Clarendon College away. Dixon picks it up over on the left hand side. He's well marshaled by Gavin Burton. No way forward for them. But the coach did speak about the need for patience as it comes across the parchment. Parchment, as usual, shows comfort on the football. And uh, tries to swing this one inside. It's cut out. I think he went for the most difficult route there. I think that outside of the foot, trying to bend it and get that gap between that half space between the central defender and the wing back. But it's an easier pass. He felt he could have gone in front, curled it around. So uh, that's something that he should do better with. But the possession there, we see Carmen College again bossing it as expected. 56% of the possession. There's a delightful cross coming in. And the header away once more from Devontae Walker. And he'll go away for a throw. The possession statistics not dissimilar to what we saw in the 2019 final. As I pointed out, Clarendon College at the end of it had 58% possession. As we come to the first water break in this Champions Cup semi final at the stadium, East Field, Bernardo Berger has shown that given the opportunities, he will be dangerous for Kingston College this afternoon. Has had a couple of attempts already, none on target yet, but if they give him the freedom, he could well make Clarendon College pay, but they have been resolute. The rural area, reigning rural area champions of the Da Costa Cup, and I think we have a tactically well thought out game on display being manifested here at the Stadium East Field. Yes, certainly a watchable game. There's not a lot of good mode activities, but what you've seen is some good technical players and a good build up plays. And both teams sort of cancelling each other's out as we could hear Coach Lang here. Well, Coach Hyde certainly used in this break not just to rehydrate his players but to certainly get uh, some tactical adjustment and not pleased with how they're closing down players when they get the Kingston College players when they get into that final third. Uh, ball coming in from the wide players he's a bit concerned about that and, and thinking that the players are not picking up the right players the ones closest to goal which is more dangerous so he will want to see that change in it um, 
I'm not surprised with Coach Hyde really barking out instruction in that break. Normally would just sit and rest on the bench, but he knows he's in a battle. He knows he's up against a good team. And he quite clearly said it in his interview. He wants to win this one. He really wants to win this competition. And to do so, he has to get to the finals. So coming in for Clarendon College. Ball step through. Hall. Pearson marking him tightly. It's a good cross and a just wide. Flag off in any case. Yeah, one is deliberate. I felt it went outside just how it curled. Uh, would have been a borderline if it had stayed in, but it definitely looked like it went out. Now, yeah, Frank could see right with the header on it. Pearson. I've not seen him for a while on it. Really been influencing the game the way he would have wanted Pearson. Kind of, kind of college team was doing a number of, has had a couple of directed passes as well. So not seeing the type of confidence that we've come to know from Christopher Pearson, but still a long way to go in this game and a lot of time for him to impact the game in the way we know he can. Here's the cross coming in. He definitely went outside. Radcliffe Seabright has scored one goal this season. So Pearson steps over this free kick for Kingston College. Jamil Vaseline goal for Clarendon College. He's definitely going for goal. He can redeem himself. And take a special strike, you feel. Yeah, you can make trouble from this distance. So Christopher Pearson steps up and smacks it into the wall. I guess you would say the wall did its job. Comes up to Watson. Pearson again. Closed down quickly by Jaheen Rose. Watson comes up to offer assistance. And the focus will finally go to the close in favor of Clarendon College as well. Yeah, very good job there by their skipper. And to think of both of us, he was not necessarily a central defender. Coach Hyde said, a player who likes to play further up the park. And as, and as such, uh, last campaign, School Board Football Time 2019, played in the middle of the park, has been asked to do a job for his team this season because they were short on central defenders, and he's doing a good job. So, you look at it, it's, it's a makeshift thing. Bedford also won that many felt would have been. So, coming in for Kingston College from Watson. Pearson couldn't get it under his control. Now, Seafright has it for Clarendon College. Seafright has space in front of him. Khalifa Richards goes with him. And it's Richards who does brilliantly to win a free kick. Beautiful work from Richards. Good defensive work as a coach. You want them to get themselves between man and ball. He did that expertly, as we see here. Looked like he was second best, but once he did the shoulder check, he just got his body across. And always going to be favored to get the referees decision. As I was saying about Rose and Beckford, Beckford also played left back in 2019, so playing out of position these two players for Clarendon College, but doing a very good job for them. Clarendon College in position. High cross, headed away by Watson. Jones for Seafright. Well done by Khalifa Richards to block the attempted cross. Looking for Pearson, brilliantly taken down by Pearson. is cut off by Akima Jones. 
the captain Barkley has now been shifted from the right to the left hand side of the attack for Kingston College and uh, Christopher Pearson couldn't find him on that occasion but he has been the Kingston College captain Barkley and a lot of quality there but they need to find a way to get the ball to him with some amount of consistency but we expect that with a 4-3-3 system that you expect your front three to be fluent and uh, not to stay on one side just give defenders something else to think about Jones for Clarendon College Jones as the Soviet keeper of his line for a second and decided he wanted to be in the Champions Cup semi-final here for this season Casey attacking again and that they will have a corner kick, the second of the contest for them. Real tactical battle, Ricardo, one of these two coach, two astute coaches, very experienced. And uh, the team that walks away with the, the win today will certainly earn it. We don't, we don't. Corner kick coming up for Kingston College, second one. Christopher Pearson with the delivery. Played from the target and headed further away. Picked up by Captain Burton for KC. Burton lifts the top of the area. Johnson was looking to turn and get a shot away. Couldn't. No Rose has it in midfield for Clarendon College. He was closed down in a jiffy. Barkley back up the right for KC. Oh, the Kingston College captain does well. Trumped it from distance. It's just wide of the mark. But showing a glimpse of his quality. How quick he is with the football at his feet. He just swept away from two defenders there. Just didn't execute a shot in the end, but beautiful move from, from Barkley. Just drag that shot wide. He wanted to at least test the goalkeeper of Arsenal on that occasion. Sat on the bench for so much of that 2019 campaign. Jermon Barkley has scored five goals this season, has five assists as well to his credit. And uh, what really is his second season playing at this level of schoolboy football. He's certainly a confident player, touch player as well. He's a confident young man on and off the field. Ball over the top. Pearson picks it up. Watson arrives. Gets possession now. Needs a good cross. Tries to cut inside the box. Jaheen Rose does very well. And Jaheen Rose wins the free kick for Clarendon College. Part of defending is anticipating and Rose actually read the play. And again, got himself between the man and the ball. Tight game this one. The last two matches between these two teams. One goal deciding it. First, the, the Olivier Shield 2018 Clarendon College, then the Champions Cup 2019 Kingston College. And those goals are known to be good goals. You just get the feeling that we could have a similar situation here this afternoon. Here's Parchment. Just run out of real estate. Neither team giving the other the type of space that they like, the type of space that they are accustomed to, that they have become accustomed to this season. I think what we've seen as well is that with Parchment, once he gets it, then Kinson College will give him that attention, looking to double-team him all the time. Just not giving him a lot of time to operate and work his magic. Barkley. Yeah, you felt he just dwelled on it a bit too long, Barkley. Had to commit that that infringement because he was at fault. I think Radcliffe Steve right just pretty much said this is not a skills competition and running and took the ball away. Clarendon College on the attack. All wide for Parchment. Three inside the box waiting. Make that four. Can Parchment find one of them? No, he can't. He was not the play. And I think Tamar John is asking why. In fact, it was Hull. Is the cross. 
it doesn't look like there was much in that. If anything, it would have been two Kingston College players coming together. And uh, Carden would have felt hard done by that. Well, Christopher Holster attended it. He was asking the question, and rightfully so. The evidence of that we play sure. 35 minutes of World Triple Semi final action. Two class coaches, two schools with tremendous footballing pedigree. And a lot on the line for both of them. Well, Kima Jones has it for Clarendon College. He has time, all the time in the world to get a good delivery in. And just nicked away by a proper shirt. And the throw for Clarendon College. What we saw good on that play just now is that Carlin College managed to create a little bit of overload or some numbers up. So Parchment got some support. Was able to get a good ball into the box. Uh, the number two player, C for it. So with a look into that number of Parchment there, Carlin looking to counter that with a little good one. Running being requested of these players. The tough conditions at the Stadium East Field. Really hot this Saturday afternoon. I think the players have gotten better and uh, more conditioned as the competitions and the season wore on. They got a break in late December, put in some working field. Have another chunky to pre season because of the COVID, but I think they're doing well before. Probably one of the few games we've seen this season as walkers on the football for Kingston College, where we've put in a good assistance and you not have a lot of stoppages because players are down for one reason or another. So that's a good sign. Parchment in possession for Clarendon College. Jones overlapping on the right. Parchment. Maintains possession though, Jones up there for assistance, finds Akima Jones now, the attempted cross is right at goalkeeper David Martin, and he hasn't had a lot of work to do so far this afternoon, David Martin, Berger trying to win it for KC, pushed off the ball by Rose. Members on that right there working together to snuff out that danger from Kenton College looking to go direct. But I think uh, Cannon College, they're going to have to get some better quality balls into the box here. Looking to create overloads, as we say, on this, the, the near side here, their right hand side, where they have Parchment doing his work. We saw Dixon there coming along with Jones to give help to Parchment just now. But the final delivery is not good enough. Something Kingston College will have to continue to work on because over time you suspect they're going to get that delivery right. Of course, we're still some way away, but there's no extra time in the Champions Cup this season. If the scores are level after regulation time, we go straight to penalties. Clarendon College finds Jones out wide again. Early delivery from Jones, but it has too much weight on it. Realized that Watson was closing him down. But Cannon College maintaining possession. Comes out to Malachi Douglas. Douglas swings this one inside. And the goalkeeper David Martin collects comfortably. 18 years old David Martin. In 2016, Tivoli Gardens got to the under-14 final. He was the goalkeeper for Tivoli Gardens. They actually beat Kingston College in the championship match. He pulled off three brilliant saves in the penalty shootout. And, well, no surprise that Kingston College would have said he's too much quality not to be among us. Too good to be where he was. <laughs> so... Vincent College looking to make him a champion again. Tight match this. He knows it. 
definitely knows it, I tell you. Normally you see him folding his hands like that, he's sitting on the bench. Not today, just not today. He really wants this title. Edward Hyde has a Cody and pointed out at the top of the broadcast. They have contested every single edition of the Champions Cup from the first staging in 2014. There's a kick to college getting ready for this free kick. Hit hard, brilliantly saved by the goalkeeper. That was not a bad effort. From Captain Barkley. But Jamil Vassal very much equal to the task. It was a good strike, had to be. It was a smart save. Getting down sharply to his left. And a good parry as well. Good firm hand didn't put it back into the danger zone. Good goalkeeping there. Good technical skill shown by Vassal. Pearson wins it for KC. Feel his pass just a little way. What we've seen a few of those from him this afternoon. He's usually of a much higher quality. I think the concern also for Coach Bernard is that not only that his quality is off, it doesn't seem to be getting the type of effort from him. Just a few occasions, he had low the pressure to break too easily. See Brian to Jones. Christopher Hall now no, over on the right. For Clarendon College, here he is trying to win possession for them. Barclay steps in. Jones wins it now for Clarendon College, and Hall is right there as well. He is followed by Pearson. And a free kick coming up for Clarendon College. I want you to also have a look at the Kingston College captain, Jamon Barkley, because you can see him visibly trying to raise the, the intensity of his team. And you can see him leading from the front as well. Here is his free kick, thunderous left footed shot, bringing out a smart save from goalkeeper Jamil Vassal. It's my say, but I think he wouldn't be pleased Vassal with the movement of his wall. They just caved in to allow that to go there. There stood their ground and it would have hit into the wall. So I would not be pleased by it. You suspect he's smiling there now, but I don't think he'll be smiling with the players that were in that wall. They needed to get that wall for him. Half time coming off Hall in possession. Slips it forward. Not a chance. Short does well to get inside the box. There's it up there. That's man. It's a block. Right there to prevent that one from going on goal. That was a crucial block there for from from Burton. See a good skill there shown by Jones. I do speak about anticipation. Gavin Burton. Another makeshift defender, if you may take from the middle of the park into the back line. That was brilliant anticipation on that occasion. Shows good versatility of players. It's good when you have players in your squad that you can shift around and put them into different position and they do a decent job just the same. Actually, Kevin Burton started at the under 14 level as a forward, then transitioned into the midfield. Now he's in defense. He understands the game fully easier. And they appreciate the defensive side of the game even more so too. Um, when you play up front, you understand what is required. You get to the back as well, you understand the game fully. So, young players, it's always good not to just tie them to one position. I don't remember right now exactly which player or school it is, but there's a player I remember telling me that he prides himself with being able to play every single position on the football field, including goalkeeper. I think it was Pop Valley, if memory serves me right, but it was one of those matches that we did at your school, William Nim. Yes, I would think. I think it was Pop Valley, you're right. Um, but he's good as a coach sometimes. He, it saves you a change at times where you can ship your play players around and still get a decent job. Ball check forward to King for Burger. The goal scorer in the quarterfinal has possession for Kingston College. We're trying to work his way inside the box. The cross is a weak one. And it's a comfortably cut out by, I think it was Tamar Todd who found himself in a defensive position. Yeah, giving some assistance to, to Beckford on that occasion because Beckford would turn inside out. And when the cross was played, his back was to the player played the cross. That's how good that move was. Then the end product not matching. Half time approaching in the first semi final of the Champions Cup. 
I guess you can consider this 2021-2022 season. Officially, it is the 2021 season. It is still the 2021 season, but as we know, not normal times. So we did get a break. Carlin College looking to get one late. Hall in possession. See for it. Dixon comes under a strong challenge. As we see the occasion from the fourth official of those three minutes that has been added on to this first half. See if I did just running into purple wall. This is the point of the match you want to be on your cues and peas. All that shot has gone onto the cross bar. I think goalkeeper David Martin thought that had gone way over. And he is quite fortunate that that one did not launch into the back of the net to give Clarendon College the lead. That's as close as either team has come in this first half. Well, you see the, the crossbar and the uprights of the goalkeeper's best friend, but on that occasion it certainly did march in all because he certainly misjudged it. Oh, here's a lot of ball forward by the captain, Barkley! Ball comes in, going to get the shot off. The 16-year-old had come into space, he had time, and must have seen glory. And could have kept the shot away. Well, this is an embarrassing moment for a striker. Just let the standing leg as you go to plant it. Just and he moved the ball away and he just missed kick there. I certainly would have seen it light up. And did you look at this one? Goalkeeper Martin certainly felt it was going outside. Just hit the top of the crossbar. I can't say enough about the Kingston College captain and his leadership, his intensity, his work ethic so far his understanding of what the occasion means and for me he's definitely delivering on all fronts not only with quality because that pass was a beautiful pass to get Johnson in behind the kind of college back line but also he drops deep as well to, to link up play so he's looking to be the provider and we quite know how well he can finish there's Pearson looking for Barkley well defended on this occasion by Akima Jones, who does well to find Hall. Hall can't get around Watson. Two coming up for Clarendon College. The intensity going up in the closing minutes of this first start. Hall in possession. No one inside the box. He tried to delay the cross, but no one would arrive. And the cross eventually came in, but no one was there. And just the same. This one feature so much of the Clarendon College that they're going to have to address that coach Hyde that they arrival into the box with his wide plays. Just not timely enough. But one interesting thing too, Ricardo, is that we've seen uh, Parchment switching uh, sides going over to the left side, but still Clarendon College continues to attack down their right side. So it's 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 Seafright who seemingly is dictating uh, because he's now on the, on the, the right side as well. Kwanaka coming up for Clarendon College. Akima Jones with the delivery. Comes on. There's a shot from Rose. Churchy Rose. That was blocked. That's not a bad way to end a really good first 45 minutes in this Champions Cup semi final at the stadium Eastfield. Both teams. Providing moments of quality, none able to find the finishing touches. Both coaches may well be far from pleased, I tell you, knowing them. But that was certainly a first half well watching. And at the end of it, it's Kingston College nil, Clarendon College nil. That's a very good first half, and we saw two goalkeepers coming up trumps for their team in the final minutes. There are seconds, there's Martin had to make himself big to prevent Clarendon College from going on the, the score sheet. But as it stands at halftime, it's nil all between Clarendon College and Kingston College.
So let's have a look at the first half highlights then. We always knew this was going to be one where chances would be few and far between Kingston College on the attack early. And this right-footed curling effort coming from Bernardo Berger, wide of the mark. You can see what he was trying to do there. Kernan College gave to left-footed effort. Wide as well, Kingston College, for the most part, forced to shoot from outside the box in the first half. This was a powerfully struck free kick from the captain, Barkley. Overall, moving out of the way, creating the space and a good save from Jamil Vasco going low down to his left. Then goalkeeper David Martin for Kingston College, leaving that one, thinking it had gone good over. And uh, well, embarrassing moment for the Kingston College number 18, Jaheen Johnson, missing his left footed kick. And then later on, Rose with a shot, David Martin with a save. And so we went to the half time break. At nil nil. Let's look at the first half statistics then. 11 shots in the match, 7 for Clarendon College, 4 for Kingston College, 3 on target for Clarendon College, 2 on target for Kingston College, and 11 falls in the contest. Says something about the physical nature of it. No cards yet though. Corner kicks, 2 for Kingston College, 3 for Clarendon College, 2 saves made by the KC goalkeeper, 1 by the Clarendon College goalkeeper. Clarendon College with 61% possession, Kingston College 39%, but the stat that matters most, Kingston College nil, Clarendon College nil, let's find out what the fans are saying, Cody will tell us. This Sunday, four matches, we're back at the stadium, East the field as we get ready for a second half action in the first the semi-final of the ISA Champions Cup. Kingston College nil, Clarendon College nil, Ricardo Chambers alongside Dwight Jeremiah. Erico, I, I think for the most part, both these two coaches would have been somewhat pleased, I feel, um, with the fact that they managed to be still on level terms, didn't carve out as much goal scoring opportunities and I think that's where Coach Hyde, he says he's patient as long as his team continues to keep possession, they'll create a lot of chances. Uh, Kingston College did get a few chance in behind the back line of Clarendon College, I really fluffed their chances in the end. And they're going to have to take their chances come this second half, but we expect most the same. Huge tactical battle. Uh, Clarendon will continue to try and get behind Kingston College's back line down the flanks. Kingston College will look to go direct at times, varying their style of attack, uh, trying to get into that final third as quick as possible. Without a doubt, of course, you remind you the last time these two teams met, 2018 Olivia Shield, Clarendon College winning by a goal to nil, 2019 Champions Cup final, Kingston College winning by a goal to nil. On both occasions, spectacular goals deciding the contest. And we might need another spectacular effort to decide this one this afternoon. Remember, if they end nil all, or if they end level at the end of regulation time, then we go directly to penalties. No extra time in the Champions Cup for this season. Second half, off and away with Clarendon College. And... Uh, well, we do that again. Full start. So the track and field season did start in Jamaica today. So probably there were quite a few full starts at Jamaica College where the first meet has been held. And one here at the Stadium East Field where track and field meets used to be held a long, long time ago. The good thing in this one is that when you're full start, you're still in it. So two teams still in it for sure. It's Nilo. It is Nilo. And we can't wait to see what will be delivered in the second half. Khalifa Richards, the Kingston College number three. Seafrack putting the header in midfield for Clarendon College. And now they will have a throw over on the far side. And they did have a, a fast start to the first half to see which of these two teams will 
Oh, to the blocks, quick as. Cannon Cottage on the attack. The final effort, not a very good one. Flying across the face of goal with height, too much height. But they would have been better served to just play that one in with the right foot. Parchment yeah. looking to use the outside of the left. He definitely has the ability to produce something spectacular and decide this game. Either in the form of an assist or finishing. Yes, when you're that good, sometimes you don't recognize that simplicity works a lot. You should hear there from Coach Bernard. It's definitely wanting to ensure that every player or possible outlet for Clarendon is under pressure, is attended to, does not want to give them any time and space. And in football, the cliche is if you could give good player time and space, they hurt you. Well, wherever you are watching or broadcasting the world, I hope you very much understand the Jamaican dialect. Because you've heard a lot of it this afternoon and you will hear a lot more. That's a promise. Ball picked up in midfield by Tamar Town for Clarendon College. He's taken out and uh, wins a free kick. Referee Odette Hamilton right on the scene. And uh, hopefully we'll see a little bit more intensity from Christopher Pearson in this second half. Because for a lot of that first half, he looked within himself. As it can only get better for, for him from here. He feel he hasn't imposed himself on this one. Few wayward passes. The energy level not there. As the free kick coming in, it's a good one. It's a good one. It's wide. Just wide. That was a close save for Clarendon College. Kahit Dixon getting the final touch. But just couldn't find the mark. It was a beautiful delivery into the box as well. Lovely delivery. I think it was Hull that sent that in. And for a moment there, I thought it was going to nestle into the back of the net. Really meant it well. That they did in the first half. They've gotten away quickly in the second half. Clarendon College. That was definitely a glorious opportunity. They have possession again. Easy call for a referee. Always tugging away on the... Kingston College player, Pearson. Barker, the captain. Lovely ball. Finds Berger. Berger to the back post. Not sure who he was trying to pick up, but no one made the run. No. Poor, poor cross in the end. Pictures all the way back to his goalkeeper, David Martin. Martin sends it now. Seafright for Clarendon College. To Mario McCarthy ensuring that he didn't make further progress. See for it, not exactly the name you see on an 18 year old these days. No, much more fancy. Let's go with what you said. <laughs> well, more modern, they would say. Um, we look at this one, my, my concern with this game is whether or not what it's so. Evenly balanced. Sometimes you see teams just a little bit into their show, just you know, being a bit more cautious because a lot riding on it. We hope not. Person with the free kick. Headed away by Rose. Richards for KC. Picks up to Mario McCarthy. David Martin, 
Devontae Walker. Walker goes long but almost aimless. A full pass from Walker. I think there was an opportunity for him to break to break the line, but don't give that ball away going into midfield from the defensive zone. So Beckford there. He's playing that one off. Didn't want that ball. Walker. Pearson. Closed on quickly. Pearson. Gets it out to Borga. Borga for Devontae Walker. Walker with the cross inside. And the clearance comes. Carrick Stewart commits the infringement and Clarendon Cummins plays the ball up field quickly looking for Dixon. Referee Odette Hamilton calls it right back. A little bit too quick for her liking. Just a feeling harm there. This is what caused that infringement. Stewart there. Perica. Devontae Walker, Captain Barkley, comes out to Stewart, Stewart goes inside the box, picked up by Jones for Clarendon College, he's away, but the goalkeeper is down, Jamil Vassal, there is James Johnson, the Kingston College number 18, didn't start in the quarterfinal on Wednesday, got a start today, also got a got an opportunity because he completely fluffed and ending up tangled with goalkeeper Jamil Vassal on that occasion. Yeah, Vassal was 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 fouled on that occasion. I think Harry Hamilton was looking to play the advantage, but once the goalkeeper was on the floor, brought the game to a halt. Coach Hyde there, pensive, thinking what he can do to really get the advantage here. Standing, doing so today, as I've said earlier, to repeat myself, but normally cuts a lax figure on the bench, sitting. He's just trying to transfer some energy to his team. Champions Cup semi final one. See right. to have possession of the football. Clarendon College. If it was a game of possession, it would be a no contest. Yeah, they would have won every game they played and won every contest they went to. But if you know it's more than that, and it's what you do with that possession there. Just now we saw Kingston College really just working hard in that attacking third. Just not allowing uh, Clarendon College to pass out and easily in the end forced an error upon them. There is no player on this Clarendon College team who is not comfortable with the ball at their feet. Pearson turns, tries to shoot. There is a chance, comes to Burger Burger, twisting and turning for Pearson for the exact chance. But Jackson on the funnel up. Cut, force it all. Kicks the college close, but not close enough. For a moment there, I felt the opportunity had gone because Burger got it, felt he should have shot. Turned around and Pearson got it and let fly. As we see here, just had the opportunity had gone here. Just as he tried to get it from under his feet, Pearson let fly. Just fell into a little dangerous area there. Corner kick coming in for KC. Check back inside, Charles. And the West of goals. Goalkeeper did well to collect there, really well. But what an opportunity before that for Kingston College. And not for the second time in this game, we saw there. So yeah. Just good heel there just to get it into that mix over the goalkeeper was brave. Brilliant work from Watson. To get it back into the interland. Which enabled us to equal to the task. Vasa picks up to A chance for Kingston College had fell to 
Jaheen Johnson the second time he has missed kicked um, in this game was sent through by Pearson in the first half. A little more pressure this time. Down with the throw. Tuffin Portner with the header away. Throw coming up for Clarendon College. Already in the second half we've seen a little bit more Gormont activity. Fifth to seventh minute of this semi-final. A smile from Gavin Burton. He will want to keep it till the very end. Kind of college would love to wipe it away. Certainly they would love to do that, but it's really on a knife edge here. Kingston College will have to defend. Jeffrey Rose. Played two seasons at the Manning Cup with Wilmers. Standing over the free kick for Clarendon College. Rose towards goal. Touched away by David Martin. Casey coming away with it. Barkley wins it. And it's poked into touch by Manakai Douglas for a Kingston College throw. It's an example of a uh, good work from both these two teams as we saw here. An attack from Clarendon College. Kingston College looked to go on the counter Clarendon working very hard to stop them in transition. A mark of good teams. Looking to work well in transition. One defensively, one attacking. Pearson has come alive in the second half as well for Kingston College. Much better display than what we saw for the first 45 minutes. Burton sends it forward for Kingston College looking for Berger. Berger will not be able to get the better of Christopher Hall. And you mentioned it earlier, Ricardo, about players on the team of Clarendon College being very comfortable with the ball. You see a player even in his defensive area there was not going to boot it out. It was done. There's a chance. Draw directly from Kahim Dixon at David Martin who made light work of that. It's almost going to be difficult for him there as we have another look at it. We have to open his body significantly to get it to that far post. Bouncing never really is going to be able to do that. The angle was a bit tight. Probably would have been better served to play it inside to the arriving sea right. Are we about to start seeing more opportunities in this semi-final? 59th minute. Yes, Kingston College they will be feeling better. The fact that um, Pearson has come to life, we see here, brought in to make a substitution. Kingston College now they feel like they, it's the right moment to try and squeeze their control on this game. Not much chatter out in the middle as well. Both teams know it's getting to a critical stage of the contest. They also know that one goal could really be the decider. Free kick coming up for Makima Jones. Hasn't gotten his radar right on that. All game long, we remember him early in the game. Two bites at a corner kick, one too short, one too long. Came with this free kick, really not able to get his, his range right so far in this game, Jones. Does have eight assists to his credit this season. And he's playing from uh, the right back position. Um, and it's, it's, it's a feature of the modern game where the full backs are very much integral in, in, in how the attacks pan out. Clarendon College. Now Kingston College. Back to the captain. Pearson heading inside the box. Pearson has possession. And Pearson can't get around the final defender. Once again, another pass of delight coming from Jamal. Back to the captain. The corner kick is staying short and quickly. 
of them, so the defender there just picking up the ball, passed it inside, but then that long ball upfield, and again possession turned over. Could try to be living with that. Burton, looking for Barkley, cleared away by Rose, comes to Cuddy for Richards for Kingston College. Richards goes long. Certainly, Kingston College will be pleased with the work that they're doing because having this kind of college team play out of character in this last few minutes, kicking the ball long, just turning over possession. Is there a goal somewhere close in this Trafford's Cup semi final? <laughs> Coach, I did say that they're going to have to defend well this game where they're in that phase of the game where they're under pressure. And we need to ensure that they are not hurt significantly as they suffer here. Hull. spell of consistent pressure here from Kingston College. Walker with the throw. They maintain possession. KC with another throw. made a massive mistake not have been one of those spectacular goals that we've come to expect to settle ties between these two teams but pretty sure based on how the game is balanced here and all coach Hyde would have taken it Pearson goes over free kick coming up for Kingston College We feel kind of need a spell of possession here to really get back a foothold into this one. It's really a state of the game here is favoring this Kingston College team. They just need to get on the ball, not necessarily penetrative passes, but really to have Kingston College chasing a little bit. Devonta Walker to the first. There's a mix up there between Dunn and his goalkeeper, Vassar. Vassar did not show it well enough, or loud enough. As you say as a coach, if you're there as a defender, deal with it and then sort it out after. Dunn dealt with it with the header. Walker with another throw for KC. Barkley, the captain, trying to head it on. Gets it back to Moan Barkley. The shot. Blocked. Burton. Pierce. 
person. There's the defense, but no, we're close to goal. I think he's just trying to impose himself on this game and trying very hard. Starts the second half better. I think trying real hard to really impose himself on this one. Seven goals in all competitions this season. Christopher Pearson, experienced campaigner, played in the Dacosta Cup for Monroe College before he made the switch to Kingston College. Was part of their 2019 Champions Cup winning team. And so he has a lot of experience under his belt. And these are the moments when experience can count for a whole lot. Yes, he'll need that for sure. He'll know that, despite he's not. Oh, Dixon gets around this man, gets inside the box of Thailand College. And the Dixon loses possession at a critical juncture of the attack. Yeah, Dixon, he was looking to get a shot off himself, but he had two players. He had Parchment and Seafright waiting on the far side. And maybe, rather than looking to go inside, could have just played it across goal. See, as he comes inside, gets the ball on that right side, which favours the defender. She just nips it off him. Looks like our, our water break is upon us. Just before the corner kick in the first half, it was just before a throw. And uh, Kingston College will have a lot of time to do, to think about how they are going to defend this guy in college. A lot of time to think about their point of attack for the corner kick coming up. Yeah, well, that was a good moment there for Clarendon College. Just didn't work out because of the decision made. And uh, just needed to tee up his two players at the far side. And to hear the technical director for Clarendon College, Lenworth Hyde, just asking Hakeem Jones if he does not know his range. And he's been speaking a lot about that. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, the game has gone on long enough and as a coach. You, you feel as it gets longer, the players should be able to adjust, and Jones just has not been able to do so. Well, let's have a look at just some of the chances in the contest. There is a person uh, picking out Carrick Stewart, and uh, the shot not yielding the desired result. Still from the first off. That one straight to goalkeeper Jamil Vessel. Free kick here. Captain Barkley. It has been good to watch that shot just wide and then we're back live now. Corner kick taken short by Clarendon College, then sent further away from goal down trying to keep it in play. Did that, but couldn't hold on to possession. Now we are at 70 minutes. I get a feeling Coach Hyde is certainly disappointed with uh, his set plays today. Clarendon College really have not executed well from their set pieces. And not really been able to hurt Kingston College at all. Rose. Really smart work there from, from Rose. Had a heavy touch realizing that it was getting away from him and just did the number one role in defending, just get your body between man and ball. And once the contact was initiated and felt that you know he was only going one way, was to ground. Did a really good jump to recover then. There is Jaeen Rose. Of course, there is also Jaeen Rose. to get that right for sure. There's Watson. There's no mistake in him. And there's the number 10, Jaheim Rose. The transfer from Wilmers was of course in the Manning Cup semi-finals with Wilmers 2019. We'll play in the Costa Cup semi-final this season with Clarendon College as he is battling now in a Champions Cup semi-final. Free kick coming up for Clarendon College. 
the delivery is good. The heads go up. And now Kingston College will get an opportunity to come away. There's not the football, there are options there for him. And just couldn't find Burger, but it falls. And the free kick coming up. It was Shaheen Johnson who was taken out on the first yellow card of the contest coming up now. And it has been given to Akima Jones. Yeah, that was a clear yellow card. I mean, he felt he had to make that that infringement. This was a little late, but had he not done so, then you felt Johnson would have been through on goal. Johnson has been through on goal twice so far in this game. Miss kicked. There's no guarantee that he would have finished, but that would have possibly would have been his easiest um, chance. Had he gone through? This is a free kick from a potentially dangerous position. Is this the moment that we have been waiting for? 73rd minute of this semi final. The captain, Jamon Barkley, is there. He will fancy his chances, no doubt. The number 10, Renato. Well, Pearson is there as well. So you have a second goal man this season, and a four goal man this season. Which one will take it? Partly the left footer, Pearson the right footer. Partly steps up, and that's gone high over the top. He's better than that, and the coach knows it. And definitely knows that that one just too much under it. Leaning back and just hitting. Always rising, even when it passes a goal, it was still rising. Yeah, leaning back, hitting too low on that one. Maybe too much fear tricks at the end of the day. Stands was better, and the run-up was better than the execution of the shot. Where's the coach? <laughs> Is that what you say to your boys? Well, I tell them they take away the wrong things from what they see. At the international level, that's what I'll tell them for that one. <laughs> Pearson standing over this one. Now the free kick coming up for Kingston College, 74th minute. All to play for in this Champions Cup semi final. Pearson. Trouble the goalkeeper from that range. 
by this time in the 2019 final, Kingston College had a penalty, failed to convert, and uh, scored a brilliant goal from Ronaldo Robinson and would have led 1 0. No goals yet in the 77th minute of this semi final. I think it's not a surprise too that Carolyn College got a big figure up front because also we have not seen parchment a lot in this second half. And Carolyn would need to get their playmaker more into the game, get him on the ball a lot more. Get the feeling Parchment has picked up where Pearson left off in that first half. Which is not a good place to be. Um, Pearson pretty much has taken up his position, which is a better, or a better position to be in. More influencing the game. Coach Hyde not pleased. And, uh, for Lee Hamilton, definitely letting him know that She's in charge here. Clarendon College getting ready to make a substitution. They are going to be bringing on Marquise Reed. The number 15. It's, it's not me, the commentator's curse, that has caused Parchment to come out saying that not having, but certainly it's really not, was not into the game in the second half. Lovely player, but just as he was pulled out against Charlie Smith, he's going to have to get better of playing 90 minutes. John Smith coming up for Kingston College. Had three missed kick in the penalty box in this game. Not his best day. And coming in for Kingston College is at their number 12, which is... Mario Campbell. Reed, the substitute. So both coaches playing their first card, looking to influence the game. It's a college looking to drive home their dominance in terms of chances. Cannon College looking to really get back a foothold in this one. It's like the coaches are reading each other so well. Dixon. Reed is up to assist. The substitute in possession. Romario Campbell trying to stay with him. Kingston College make it away. And they have numbers going forward, but Carrick Stewart's First attempt at a pass is not a very good one, and Carnan College have an opportunity to go the other way. Seafright does well to keep it in play. And then a forceful challenge coming in from Khalifa Richards, and a yellow card as well. He's in disbelief. The assistant saying, well, the assistant is saying, well, I was right here. You did it right in front of me. And it seems as if it was going to be a throw into to Kingston College or not understanding there. And he hit that ball forcefully against the Clarendon College player. He's still in dis disbelief. Yeah, I did get the follow through. Got a piece of the player. And see right there. Making a lot of it, but yes, did get a touch. And did enough to convince Ferry Hamilton that he should be given a free kick. And also a yellow card bandish. I think the assistant was in disbelief that he did that right in front of his eyes. Here's the free kick coming in right to David Martin. And not expecting him to make the goal. <laughs> Yellow card. Carrick Stewart. So the yellow cards are flying left, right, and center now. Third of the contest. 
and was a brave play there from, from Reed Marky Reed. I think he was second best to win that one. As you can see here, after Dunn lost possession, he just made up so much ground. It then caused Stewart to come in. Let's see if he went over it. He had to follow through. He's high on the side. We are at the business end of this semi final. Poor attempt at cross there needed to go between the line of the defense and the goalkeeper. Ball played out wide for Reed, the substitute. Reed's cross has uh, too much weight on it. Reed. Pearson. Romario Campbell. Reed commits the infringement. Marquis Reed, his father Roger Reed, played for two of the guards at the national team as well at some point. When you see a player that size comes onto the park, you see that shot going wide. So saying you see a player like that coming onto the park in his size, you suspect he has good football in skills. We also now learn, or we know he has good football in pedigree as well. Small in stature, but certainly one that Coach Hyde trusts to be able to bring him success here. Maybe all the goals in this semi final will come from penalties. Who knows? Still seven minutes plus added time to go in regulation time. Kingston College with Pearson. Pearson looking for Barkley up front. Good defending. Still KC in possession. Pearson again. He's come alive, slips one through, comes back to Pearson, the left foot in effort. Doesn't have the direction he desired. I just think he's, he's snapping a bit at the shots. He's not showing the type of composure we've come to, to associate with him. Just looking a bit hurried every time he goes for the shot. So that's trying to be forceful. And just trying to get himself into this game, force himself in it as we see. Goalkeeper there for Parand and Vassal needing some attention. Kingston College will want to make good of their, their pressure, their goal mouth activities, because so often we've seen in games where teams get in a lot of opportunities and just one break for the opponent and you find yourself behind. So you kind of looking to inject more fresh legs into the game. Number five. Damien Abraham's looking to come in. Replacing Shaheem Rose. We've won it from the penalty spot in the quarterfinal, so if it does go to penalties, then Clarendon College will not have Rose. Substitution, just looking to, to gain control of the middle of the park, pressure things up there. Abraham's only employed in a central midfield rule. That's where he is gone. Neither team can afford to make a mistake. Could that be one? Dixon on his way for Clarendon College. Gets inside the box. Turns the way they play. Wait there. What a goal. Clarendon College in front. The champions fall behind with minutes to go. can't 
can't really imagine that they've gotten so lucky here from a what normally watertight defensive unit. Coach Bernard said he was very confident with his back four and goalkeeper, but they let him down there. And Dixon unwrapped it. We're out of December, but the gifts are still coming. Kingston College served up one here for Clarendon College. They certainly have. And the Cooking Dixon on the score sheet spoke about the opportunities he would have had before to get the ball on target, to get crosses in, to give others opportunities. And the Kingston College just switching off there, just switching off. And the errors piled up in that one play. And the Clarendon College took advantage and have the lead. Kingston College with a corner kick for 80th minute of this semi-final. Walker for Pearson. Oh, Pearson is dispossessed. Oh, one by Walker again. Casey still fighting. Walcott inside. Backed away. And pulled in any case. So it's going to be a free kick for Clarendon College. And the Kingston College do not have a lot of time to come back into this semi-final. But the brave may fall, but they may never yield. And they have two and a half minutes plus added time to show how much they are not willing to yield. It's certainly up back against the wall here. And no team has been able to defend the Champions Cup since its inception. And uh, Kingston College is looking to do that again a bit scrappy in terms of the clearance. Clarendon College. Douglas checks in, not the assault as well now. Clarendon College running off to the Champions Cup final for 2021 22. Christopher Hall with the finishing touch. Clarendon College to pair. Knows now that he will have a chance to play for this title, for this trophy that has eluded his team. Have a look at this. You talk about the finish, but just look at that chip pass. Beautiful, lovely, orchestrated pass there. Lovely chip pass there. And you felt once Douglas played that in behind, it was always going to be one result. And that finish was smart. Really good finish. Really befitting of the pass that came in from Douglas. And that's an assist and a half, if I may say so. Beautiful goal there from Cranon College. And we've said in the past that this fixture has always served up some beautiful goals. The first one, defensive error. The second one, in terms of the pass and the finish. Right back into that category, Ricardo. For sure. For sure. The champions have been dethroned. Treatment for a Clarendon College player. I think it might be Rose, who was substituted a short while ago. The goalkeeper for Kingston College has also been substituted. Not that it matters. You wonder the thinking behind that. Pearson. We're on 90 minutes. Awaiting confirmation of how much time to be added on. Romario Campbell. Pearson. Still fighting Kingston College. Campbell. Twisting and turning. Taking down. No. Fair challenge. And Clarendon College are away again. And a quick two over three. Five minutes of time to be added on. Reed sends it forward, and the flag is up for offside. But I think this game has been won from the bench, so to speak. If you look at the substitutes made, substitution made by Clarendon and Kingston College, and the impact that it has had on the game, I think Clarendon College substitutions um, have, have really had more impact than that of Kingston College today. In the first of five minutes to be added on. Can Kingston College do something special? Pearson. Burger. Strong defending again. 
read. All they need to do is to control the game now. Clarendon College. Burger. Thompson is taking down free kick coming up. In Kingston College they've been taking a lot of quick free kicks. You don't suspect that they're going to do that. But this time around, they're going to take their time to see if they can get um, something in it. Uh, and see if they can really get a chance to, to strike on goal. And for a defence that has conceded just one goal all season long to give up two today, it's not what was expected. It's a kind of college with another substitution here. Cooper coming in. Carlos Cooper. Replacing Paul, who scored the second goal. Game management is going to be key. There's one team that you think should be able to manage this final five or, or four minutes in this game. It's kind of college. They just now have to show that composure. We still see them going looking for that third goal. Uh, you feel once they get possession, they should try and just do what they do best. Watson standing over it. The Kingston College number 11. Watson shoots all oh, the crossbar. That was not far away. Beautiful strike there, like me. I think goalkeeper, their goalkeeper Vassal was a mere spectator because he was never getting to that one. He didn't even attempt to get there, just hoping that his best friend or one of his best friends or both of them came together. The crossbar and the upright came together there uh, to keep that shot out. Dixon and Christopher Hall, the difference makers, 
as Clarendon College beat Kingston College by two goals to nil and have advanced to the final of the Champions Cup as they seek their first title in this competition. Well, let's have a look at the full highlights then from this contest. Kylan College actually started well. Kingston College, though, getting the first couple of shots in. That one from Renato Berger, a curling right-footed effort wide of the mark. This one headed wide of the mark as well for Clarendon College. The Kingston College captain, Barkley, looked good, I thought, especially in that first half, the left-footed effort. Just wide of the mark, just look at how good he is with the ball at his feet, creating space for himself on the shot wide. And then this one was on target, pro producing a smart save from Jamil Vassal. See Wright got into the contest, and the, that right footed effort from the Clarendon College number two coming off the crossbar. Second half. But still in the first half towards the end, James Johnson with an opportunity just completely missing it. Embarrassing moment for the 16-year-old. And that shot from Jaheim Rose at the end of the first half, saved by David Martin in goal for KC. Second half now, Kingston College looking to get that go-ahead goal. Berger just couldn't get that ball under his control. Pearson with a shot, pretty up the save by Jamil Vassal. And they couldn't poke home the follow-up. But good work there from Berger, good attempt, and the dream Johnson arriving, but couldn't get it on target. Kareem Dixon, with a right footed effort, just trying to open his body up, but couldn't open his body up enough to really test goalkeeper David Martin. And he provided a few issues, but he was always up against it in terms of the numbers. This one pulled back. And the shot coming from Demario McCarthy initially blocked. There it is from McCarthy. Good block coming up and then cleared. Then finally, in the 86th minute, Clarendon College ball stolen here off the boot of Khalifa Richards. And Dixon inside the box, firing through the legs of the goalkeeper David Martin, who you feel should have done a lot better with that. Just have a look at how many of errors in the Kingston College defence leading to that goal it is to stop the Jackson and the goalkeeper as well should have done so much better. One minute in the 86th minute for Clarendon College. And you got the feeling that would have been enough to win it based on what had happened. But then they would get the best goal of the match. This was class. Beautiful chip inside coming from Manakai Douglas and the finish from Christopher Hall. Brilliant as well. Tremendous composure and confidence. Look at this. Just kicks it down on the chest and the slips it past the advancing David Martin. Clarendon College 2. Kingston College 0. Clarendon College 2 to the Champions Cup final. Statistics. 23 shots in the match, 13 for Clarendon College, 10 for Kingston College. Both had five on target, 27 fouls, 14 committed by Kingston College, 13 by Clarendon College, three in the cards in the contest, all in the last 18 or 20 minutes. Two to Kingston College players, one to Clarendon College. Nine corner kicks in the match, five to KC, four to CC, and the three saves each. 60% possession to Clarendon College, but unlike 2019 in the final, they actually come out on top this time around by two goals to nil. Well, let's find out who the man of the match is, and well, you don't really have to guess, it's the man who got the opening goal. It's a very good game from you today. From moment there, you're on your own a lot of time. Did you feel like it wasn't going to come? Yes, I feel like it. I know it's going to come. In the finish that you did, was just tell me a little bit about that finish. Was it the instant or the two? To the two. You just put the hand kick. It was a brilliant performance from you as well. You're in the finals. Yeah. All the best. They have fixed their man of the match here. Really worked hard throughout this game. I really cut a load some figure at times. But stop with it. He said he felt the goal would come. Coach, in an interview early before the game, you said the game would have been won or lost in defence. 
Somebody could have thought it would have been that way. Yeah, the prediction came out and wrong end, you know, and we, we were very uncharacteristic in that mistake. And it really hurt us because we were probably preparing for the penalties at this point. But the Clarendon team was very resilient and um, they capitalized on an error that we made, you know. They, they made errors in their defense as well for which we didn't capitalize on. And um, I think it's a fair result. Oh, it's a, it's, you, you got a lot of chances in the game. You had good chances, but at the end of the day, they took advantage of our errors, and that's the important thing. I'm not at all perturbed by by what has just transpired. Probably it could serve as a fillip for, for 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 things to come in the future. You know, um, my composure, I think, of my players let me down here today, and we have some other little issues that we have to deal with, which I figured out by the time we come to our next game again on Tuesday, we should be able to resolve. Well, coach, all the best going forward. Thank you very much. Yes, sir, Coach Bernard there. Uh, graceful in losing today. I felt it was the right result in the end, despite all the chances he got. Uh, coach, I, was there a point in this game that you felt it wasn't coming? Yeah, yeah, they did, they did. Um, Casey had their moments in the game about the, at the start of the second half. I think they had the upper hand for about 15 to 20 minutes. We were a bit lucky. We, we got some ball out and goal in, in the nick of time. I think we had a little luck in that. Situation. But we showed some determination. We showed resilience. We wanted it today. And as you can see how we played today. You know? well, we started out well passing and things, but such is the game. You know? So looking forward going into the finals now, what comes out of this game that you've won it? Yes, but what would you like to see better from your team? I want to see the same courage, the same determination that we showed today, but with much more playing. You know, we want to see more possession, more, more down the flank, squares on, and things that we practice. I would like to see more of that. Well, your team is getting better as the competition goes on. All the best, coach. Thanks, Rob. Dear as well, join us. Thank <laughs> you.